Okay, fine, fine. I know you're all just waiting for me to get up so we can film some more stuff, but I'm tired. So you're just gonna have to wait. Be patient. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> oh man, it was a long night. Why do I drive at night? That's a quiz I'm asking you. Say it to yourselves. Why does Jack drive at night? Ooh, yep, you got it. Less enforcement, less people. I'm not a people person. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll get up. I'll get up. I'll get ready. I'll show you a few things. That was the baby powder. However, it was mentioned uh, earlier that in a previous comment from a different video that, uh, what was it? I might have to go back and look. Uh, it was a starch, cornstarch? Was that what it was? You're probably laughing, you that commented. It's probably You're probably laughing, going, yes, yes, that's what it was. I'm gonna try that. When I stop to get some, um, when I stop to get some supplies, I'm gonna get a little sprinkle. Ah. Uh, and then some of you said, why don't you just shower more? Well, I just don't have time on the road, okay? And it costs $15 to shower on the road. My problem is, you guys, I only wash my hair probably, I don't know, a couple times a month. The other times you just need to pull the oils out. It doesn't need to be washed. I think hair gets overwashed so much. I washed it the other day. That's why it's all floofy looking. Woo! <laughs> you get enough of that yet? I've added one little, um, one little thing to my beard care routine I wanted to share with you. Got a little, little loche there. The, I found the great product to keep my beard luscious and wonderful, but my skin's been drying out a little underneath it. The beard conditioner does not do anything to your skins underneath, see? So, you don't have to ask what kind of lotion. You get whatever kind you want, I don't care, but it does help a few times a week. You gotta go underneath. You can't come in from the top, it just won't make it through the jungle. Lotion's on the front side of the hands, up underneath. Shield the lotion, protect the lotions until it's time to deploy! Deploy the fingers! Yes! Ah! Oh. And then uh, after that, of course it's time for the good old trucker's magic. Give me a little skosh of the old magi. You guys remember when I introduced this to Heavy D and Diesel Dave down in, on the side of the road? Oh, it does wonders. Maybe I should make my own formula of trucker's magic someday. Oh, man. Look at that beast. Ooh. <laughs> There's a guy out there watching me right now going, what is he doing? Okay. One last little thing. I know this seems silly. You gotta take care of the biz, otherwise when you get home, you're all like Rrr. Little loche for the face. Oh. Trying to keep myself from looking like I'm 79 years old at age 35. Did you know that's how old I am? 35? Oh, bet you never thought you'd be sitting in front of your computer watching a hairy old guy put lotion on his face. <laughs> okay, let's go. Need some help? Oh man. Damage. Should have worked or no? Woo! No. <laughs> <laughs> man. Yeah. It's too much. It wore down, didn't it? <laughs> okay, first things first. Before we do anything, we're gonna go in and eat a little truck stop breakfast. Because if you haven't ate a truck stop breakfast, 
you're missing out. It's important for you to support truck stop cafes, whether you're a trucker or otherwise, because truck stop cafes are a dying thing. And if the drivers don't go in in the morning and support truck stop cafes, then truck stop cafes will vanish. And if they vanish, then that's just another piece of good old American history and culture gone down the tube. So we're here on I-80 down in Nebraska. I can't remember what little spot we are, but uh, we're gonna go in. We're gonna get a, gonna get a breakfast. I'm gonna do some book work. y'all I'm here with Shane Shane was my waitress today and she's great she's great what uh, what town is this no I was well, trying to tell him when I came in, in it's kind of in between it's so what is a it? small it's a it's small really town, a town. if you blink your eye you're gonna pass it it's Alda Nebraska okay, okay. exit 306 306 306, mm -hmm. 306. come here and pick up sticks <laughs> Steaks are amazing yeah um, we're close to Grand Island we're about yeah. uh, about eight to ten miles yep. from Grand Island. How Carney. long have you been uh, working truck stop cafe? Yeah, how long? Yeah. Are we going way back? Or yeah, we just yeah. Care? Clear oh, back the I'm history since, of your trucking. Oh, okay, since age of fourteen. Age of fourteen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <I'll be darned. laughs> see, see, truck stop cafes are kind of a they're kind of going out the window. It's really hard to find one. They've been replaced by hot cases everywhere. I know the truckers around and shit, uh, nodding their heads going, oh yeah. And they love this stuff. So yes, yeah, so when mm -hmm. you get a chance to sit down, um, it's really nice and I encourage everybody to support it because if we don't, they're going to... These do, boom, gone. Vanish. And I've had so boom, many gone. corn dogs that I can't eat another corn dog <laughs> out of the hot cake. Are you, are, you native, are you native to Nebraska? Uh, born in Nebraska, raised in okay. Wyoming, oh, Ohio yeah? for a little bit. Okay, of I'm, a, I'm a Montana boy. Oh, hey, so. family's up there. Yeah? Okay. Awesome. Uh-huh. Good. Awesome. Well thanks for uh thanks for the good food and uh, Thank you. Carry on. Appreciate you. <laughs> we'll Thank see you, you next time. it that was breakfast at the truck stop find my key tell you what there isn't really a more uh, there really isn't more of a salt of the earth crew than, than the truck stop waitresses they're an iconic they're an iconic thing <laughs> they've been they've been sung about they've been written about they're kind of there since the beginning they're like our they're like our mothers of the highway so to speak sort of kind of they kind of give you that niceness that you uh that you miss you know you're on your own and you're alone you're in your truck and you don't get to talk to anybody and then you go into a truck stop and they're always really friendly and want to know where you've been where you're headed to and what you're hauling and, and it's, it's just nice to have someone like oh hey you know he take us kids on the truck and i have memories i can still remember the names of some of these waitresses and clerks at these truck stops because you'd run the same route every week back and forth and so of course 
week after week after week. And this is before social media connected people that way. It was it was fun. You you get to know them and they get to know you and they they get to know your preferences and you know old Rooster always liked to Diet Pepsi. That was always his thing. So it was <laughs> they just see him come in. They wouldn't even come over to say hi unless it was with you know a Diet Pepsi and <laughs> and then it was always Diet Pepsi in the salad bar <laughs> and then they'd come take the order. Oh, good good memories, good times. That's why I so badly want this stuff to be preserved. Uh, I mentioned it with <clears throat> with the waitress in there, but it really, you guys, it really is bad. Everyone's like, oh, big old fat truckers. And you're like, well, there's nothing good to eat. All You, you pull into 75, 80% of these truck stops, and all there is is a hot case with fried food in it. And that's it. Unless you go out of your way and go wiggle into a Walmart or a grocery store somewhere and you can fill your fridge with stuff. Which, you know, we I try to do as much as I can, which is why I keep my, man, my, just These guys, you come out here on the road for a month at a time, two months at a time, some of these guys, and that's all you got to eat day after day after day. And these cafes provide, you know, some real food, and you know, not that <laughs> pancakes and all that butter and syrup's good for you, but it's like, it's just real, and it's like, your, it's your moment to kind of connect. Most of these guys, they'll park, they'll jump in their truck, and they'll just drive off and go, you know? And I'm like, man, y'all need to go in and eat breakfast. <laughs> You know, that's back, that's when drivers used to connect. They'd sit down and over meals was a lot of times where you'd hear somebody talking down the road. If you're not down the, you know, a couple seats down, they'd be saying, oh, I heard, you know, this road was, was pretty rough. I haven't been up there. I don't, I don't know about Highway, you know, 12. And you can lean over and go, oh, I was, uh, I was on it last week. It is rough. Um, <laughs> I'd go around if I were you. For sure, I'd route around it. And they'd connect that way, and, and that created this camaraderie. See, there's a problem in the trucking world right now where nobody connects anymore. It's just everyone's in their own little bubble. <sighs> kind of doing my walk around, checking my uh, checking my rig, but here's my, next, here's my next challenge, okay? Different states have different uh, weight allowances. One state will say, you can load this much weight on your truck, and the state next door to it will say, Oh, hold up, that's a little too heavy. In our state, you can only load this much. Now the problem with this that we run into is these loads, we get paid by the ton. So we get paid by weight. So the more weight that we haul, obviously, the more we get paid, right? And you're out here to make money and make it work. So this becomes tricky and this is always the temptation uh, I'll give you a good example. Last weekend, I loaded in Indiana. Indiana is a state that has the most weeniest light weight laws, as do most of all the states east of the Mississippi River. Very light. They only let you load little baby light loads, which we can have a talk about that later as to why I disagree with that, but you can only load little baby light loads. They say it's to protect their roads, but ironically, all the roads east of the Mississippi are by far the worst roads in the entire United States. We'll, we'll do another video sometime. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain my thoughts on all that. So I loaded a load, it was paying an amazing amount uh, per ton. But I could only load very limited tonnage because I was in Indiana. Even though if I drove just a state over and got into Missouri, the weight went up. And then if I moved another state over into Iowa or Nebraska, the weight went up. And then a little further, the weight continued to go up. The further west you go, the more weight you can haul. So it was it was frustrating because if I could have loaded western weight, the load would have paid probably another dollar per mile. But I had to load legal for Indiana, even though I was only gonna be in Indiana for a couple of hours. It was such a light load that I didn't even get to use my extra axle. I kept it up off the ground the whole time. So <clears throat> this load, I loaded it in Idaho, which is a heavy state. Ooh, you Idahoans. Ooh. So I loaded, I loaded Idaho legal, Montana legal, uh, Nebraska legal, Iowa legal. However, I'm not gonna tell you how much it is weight-wise because I don't want to incriminate myself. But it it is a little more than they like to have in the state that I'm going to. So. Uh, I'll have to just be careful about that. I, and this is what's frustrating. I'm, I'm totally legal the entire way except for the last 80 miles of my trip. So this is the question for you. What would you do? You tell me. You comment on this. 
what would you do? Do you load Western legal? So out of a 1,450 mile trip, you're legal for 1,370 miles of that trip. You're totally, just perfectly legal. But you're not for the last 80 miles. You're gonna be overweight for your last 80 miles. So what do you do? I'm gonna basically burn the same amount of diesel whether I load a big, heavy load and move more product, or if I load a light load. The difference in diesel burning is very little. So me, I feel like, load Western legal and in doing so I'm saving resources I'm transporting more material down the road and I just have to sneak in that last little 80 miles I get the I get the higher pay um, we move more product the more product that I move that means the less they have to move on the next truck so overall it's less truck loads less truck loads means less resources means less diesel burn less emissions so to me I say load Western legal and do what you got to do. But last weekend it was totally backwards. I could not get those guys in Indiana to load me Western legal. They're like, nope, nope, we're loading you Indiana legal. And I spent the entirety of the weekend, it was a, it was a eight, uh, 1600 mile trip. And I spent the entirety of that weekend in states where I was loaded super light. And I burned all that diesel to bring a little baby load 1600 miles west. So that's our thing. I'm going to be legal until about uh, 1 o'clock in the morning. And then we're going to have to uh, hope and pray that they'll let us do that. But it, the, it's frustrating because, I mean, if you get stopped, when I say legal, you're just going to, get, you're going to have to buy a permit and you get a little ticket and they'll let you go. But why? Why do we even deal with that? Why not, why not make everybody standardize in the Western way? Because the Eastern roads are horrible. They're not going to get any worse. <laughs> Oh, uh, anyways, all right. I'm gonna finish my walk around, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna get this rig rocking. Oh yeah, quick side note for you. <laughs> when I say Western legal, I'm obviously not talking about that Western state, California. They're the only one that's like, no, no. Oregon's heavy. Washington's a heavy state. Nevada, Utah, Arizona, Arizona, New Mexico, California are like, yeah, let's. We are little light states. We do not want you to, uh, to push uh, the weight on our roads. Anyway, just had to make that quick disclaimer so that you fully understood when I say western states. I'm excluding California, Arizona, and New Mexico. Y'all was doing a little, uh, doing a little inspection and noticed some dried uh, coolant on my motor. Got my little overflow here and I believe it's just my hose clamp. Hope it's not a cracked. I think it's just the hose clamp. So first thing whenever you're doing radiator stuff, first thing you want to do is pop your cap off and take the pressure. <laughs> Otherwise it squirts out everywhere. But we're going to take that off. It's dripping off of here but I think it's just coming out of the clamp and it's all kind of built up around it. So. We shall see. It appears to be just the hose clamp. You always want to watch for a, it's probably just a loose clamp, but you, while I'm here, I'm going to take it off and inspect the hose. You want to make sure the hose isn't cracked. This all, whoops. This here all appears to be fine. It's got a little flex to it because it's warm. But you want to be sure it's not I'm be sure it's not a crack. A little aging there, but I'm sure it's not a crack underneath there. That's what we're gonna check. Okay, so bad news is it is there's a slight little just a little tiny crack right there. I can almost pull the hose. I can trim these little flanges back and slide the hose further up on the nipple. And clamp it but I've also got some like some super glue stuff I'm gonna put on there and try to focus I'm gonna try to uh, seal it up a little and I'm gonna try to trim these wings back just a hair and slide that hose further on and put it on our to-do list for uh, home time maintenance new radiator tank for the old girl Okay, well we 
got that little unexpected uh, thing out of the way. It was dry. I'm not. Uh, I'm only 130 degrees on my temp, so it's not real pressurized. I put that. I kind of had some super glue JB Weld stuff that I put on there, and I couldn't quite get it to set up all the way, so I took some vinyl tape and wrapped around it real tight and then slid the fitting back over and slid the clamp further up the up the nipple definitely a replacement thing that's what stinks about those tanks they're not that expensive probably probably 180 dollars but the rest of the tank is fine it's just that little plastic nipple that comes off there that's cracked so anyway i've got another week and a half on the road so hopefully it works uh if i get the chance i may swing in and try to pick one up just to have it with me put it in the bunk that's something i can do on the road if that thing comes apart completely then we'll have to replace it on the uh, roadside so that's the plan let's get out of here i'm getting uh getting late enough i think i can hit that i'll let the cat out of the bag it's wisconsin that's the state that's a light state that i just have to slip into but uh, i think the timing is just about right i should hit there uh, late in the evening my log books are all refreshed How's that song go? It goes, uh, I'm a little overweight and my log books are way behind. I'm a little overweight later tonight. My log books, they'll be golden. <laughs> oh, you guys, I'm stressed. <laughs> oh, you want to talk about law enforcement everywhere. Man, it just puts you on edge the whole day. Just the whole day. I haven't gotten an inspection in three years and then twice in the last month, three weeks. I've had paperwork checks and I was fine. I mean, I'm fine. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just can't get into it because they would never understand. So I, I was getting ready to, when I was eating breakfast, I saw a DOT officer, which for those of you that may not know, DOT officers usually drive around in pickups. They say commercial enforcement or whatever. They're, they're, they're law enforcement officers, but they do nothing with personal vehicles. They're 100% dedicated to terrorizing semi-trucks. <laughs> That's what they do. So, anyway, I, uh, I'm, eating, I'm eating breakfast at the cafe. I look out the window and what do I see? There's a DOT goes by. And he's heading up the road that I wanted to go on. I'm like, what? what? So I'm like, well, I guess I'll stay on the freeway. A little, little bull rack. I haul cows too. I'm like, well, I'm gonna stay on the freeway then. Well, as I'm getting ready to pull on to the freeway, here comes the DOT coming off the freeway. I'm like, how are you all here? Well, I'm gonna stick with my freeway plan, I guess. I'm committed. So I get on the freeway and I'm just going through the gears, getting up to speed, and guess what I see? Look in my mirror, who's passing me? Another DOT officer. Three DOTs in like one little, little circle. Five miles down the road, look in my mirror, guess who's coming up behind me? Highway patrol. They're everywhere, everywhere. Like I say, I'm fine, I'm legal, I'm fine, but it just puts you on it. Just kinda like when you uh, come over the hill and you see a cop, everyone's like, whoa, brake check. <laughs> it's like that, it puts, you, it puts you on edge, you know? Nothing against the DOT, but uh, it definitely puts you on edge. There's another heavy truck, he's on heavy. So anyway, you guys, I'll be fine, it'll be fine. You got to go, you know what you're back in the back right now. Ah, uh, 10, they's everywhere today, they's all over the place. Inside and outside, up and down. Ah, Smokies to the left. We got bears to the left, bears to the right, bears everywhere. <laughs> yeah, breaker, breaker. There's DOT, uh, there's DOT climbing out of the woodwork, son. There's everywhere. Yeah, I, I can't see him. I feel like I remember on Star Wars when, uh, when Porkins or whatever's making the last run through the, the trench to blow up the Death Star. Like, you've got one on your tail. He's like, uh, I, 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 can't, I can't see him. I can't see him. And then, ah! He gets blown up. That's how I feel. I feel like, I feel like Porkins from Star Wars. Uh, Porkins. Oh, baby, oh, baby. Come on, breaker, breaker. Oh, got this eastbound I 80 scale. She's closed down. She's closed. Closed for business. Closed for the hour. Closed for the time being, ladies and gentlemen. We're just gonna rock it on by. Uh huh. Engine braking prohibited. Don't need the engine brake because I don't gotta stop for nothing. Whoo! There she is. Color Eastbound Waverly. She goes by the name of Eastbound Waverly. Looks like there's 
some enforcement inside doing a little inspection, but they shut her down for some reason. Oh, boys. Oh, boys. Look over there. They got them all stacked up on the ramp. Just waiting for their chance to die there. Come on. Well, what do you think? <laughs> oh, man. So I made it across Nebraska. I, it's just, I think I counted 13 total. Counting the scale, 14 on the other side. So much law enforcement today out there. Man. But we did all right. We made it across. Nobody felt the need to uh, inspect whole JJ. Um, so now I'm in uh, Waterloo. Waterloo, Iowa. It's getting to be darkness. Wanted to stop, stretch my legs, check my hubs. Checking hubs is important. That's how you know if your wheels are gonna fall off your trailer ever. And mine are all nice and cool. Like, it's cool that they're cool. You follow me? <laughs> From here, we're gonna cut on across. Uh, keep pushing across Highway 20 here. We'll hit Dubuque, and then we're gonna turn it on up, take some two lanes up into Wisconsin. It'll be like 10.30 at night, so hopefully everybody's in their houses and in their homes enjoying nighttime. And uh, old JJ and the uh, JJ and the fertilizer. I haven't talked about that yet either, have we? We'll talk about it in the morning. But uh, JJ and the fertilizer are gonna slip it on in to uh, Wisconsin, so. They just do cold sandwiches in Iowa or what? <laughs> people, people here don't have, uh, taste buds. Ah, no taste buds. Well, that very would ex bland Yeah? Okay. Iowans are very bland. I'll remember that. <laughs> are they? Yeah, you can always have ice cream. Is it cucumber? Uh, yeah. Yep. You can put some spinach on there too. Okay. Spinach is the key to having a luscious beard. Like, uh, remember Popeye, the cartoon Popeye? Yeah. His spinach went to his muscles. My spinach goes to my hair. Okay. Yeah. Any other veggies? Um. Yeah, how about some of them banana peppers? Okay. Sauce? Yeah, do you got like some sweet onion? Yes. Yeah. Some, yeah? It's at the end, right end, got it. There's, oh yeah, look at that. Mm. What's going on here? The old applicators. It likes the fart. It's kind of, not coming out. Is that enough? Yeah, like, oh, that's okay. good, perfect. Anything else? No, that's gonna, that's gonna do it for me. You guys are the best cookers in all of Iowa. <laughs> no, as far as I'm concerned, y'all are the best. <laughs> just follow instructions? You know, if more people would just follow instructions, you know? Kind of hard to find these days. So you want to know what? The, uh, the deal with that is that I want you all, I want to encourage you all to talk more to people and be friendly and converse and connect and you will be surprised how much that helps a person's day. Like they were doing fine in there. I mean, it wasn't like they were all bummed out or nothing before I showed up, but just chatting with them, making some conversation, making light, making fun, having fun. Everybody loves it and it just cheers up their night cheered up my night and uh, you just never know what that does for somebody. Uh, well, we made it. Got one little problem though and I've never run into this at a country co-op. <laughs> Gee. Uh, yeah. They have their little driveways shut down, locked up. 
No fences or nothing, just specifically to keep guys out. From my old trusty satellite map, I thought I could park right there. Now I find myself out in the country <laughs> with, with no place to turn around and can't go back to town. And I'm blocking the old road out here. Bah, 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 bah. And it's 1.30 in the morning. Well, I don't know. We'll figure something out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I found a spot that I'm gonna that I'm gonna stay at. That's not from me. No. Whenever I see trails, I'm always like, "Is that from me?" I was able to get flipped around out here. In the country, and uh, that's a long dark road. Anyway, this little road is a stop sign, and there's kind of a little wide area here before this road meets. So obviously not approved, but sometimes this is trucking. Sometimes this is trucking, you guys. It's just, what are you gonna do, you know? I guess I could drive back into town, but now that I'm out here, I sure don't want to because I made it out, no problems, no enforcement issues. And uh, like I say, we'll be unloading in a few hours, so. If somebody needs to, I guess they'll come bang on my door and wake me up. But I think I'm in a good spot. See this big old, it's kind of a big area. See the road's not till over there. See how it curves around and then goes down. So I'm gonna call this no man's land. <laughs> okay, well that's gonna be lights out on a stressful day. It was stressful, so much law enforcement. And then I found out when I get to Wisconsin that they have frost restrictions going on, which means they're even a lighter state. So I'm glad to know that going forward so I can plan accordingly. They're a way light state. So it's hard to unwind and go to bed. You get all kind of pumped up and you're like, ah. and then you parked right here like this. Everyone that drives by, you're like, ah. Ah. You're always worried. You just sit there and you're always worried that someone's gonna like come bang on you. I mean, they're not gonna. We're like out in the country. You Wisconsins, you're all eating cheese and being happy, right? Like, y'all ain't gonna be upset that I'm parked right here on this little triangle thing. You know what? Actually, I've got two pieces of Tillamook cheese. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave a note and some cheese taped to my window on the outside that says, Sorry, I parked in a weird spot. No options. Please accept this cheese as my token of gratitude. Oh, all the Wisconsin folks, they'll, they'll, uh, oh, oh, they'll be driving by and go, oh, what's that truck doing there? <laughs> oh, and then they'll see the cheese and they'll be happy. I don't know how it took me so long to figure that out, but now I'm going to sleep like a baby. So will they mix this with something else or they just put this on by by itself? Uh, we mix it in with other fertilizers. Okay. Um, sometimes it's a uh, chicken manure we have and uh, we have a uh, organic potash, it's old 50. So you got a, you got like a little brewery back there where you get to make your little custom Yo. little splash of this and a sprinkle of that. Right on. How old are you? Uh, 26. Okay. And raised right here? Yep. 
<laughs> Atta boy! <laughs> so your folks farm then? Yep. We have a little beet farm and cash crop. And beet farm, you said? Yep. What we done? Like sugar beets? No, or? beets. Oh, beets. Cattle. Yep. Ah. Okay, so you're a cattleman as well. Yep. Atta boy! <laughs> the whole load. Mm -hmm. Dang. Huh, I'll be darned. So you have a pit that'll take it. Oh yeah. And then by the time the next truck gets in position, it's about emptied out? I, Halfway. It takes a couple minutes for it to empty out, but if it's empty, you can drop a yeah. full semi load in wow. there. So you guys take corn here then and during harvest and everything? Yep, corn and soybeans. Okay. Where does that go, your corn? Uh, our here? corn our corn goes to an ethyl plant, ethyl plant usually, so. Okay. You know, there's another guy that runs Hopper from Montana, and he was loading, uh, he's loading distillers here somewhere in Wisconsin to go clear back to Montana with dry distillers. Really? That's how hard up they are for feet out there. I mean, like, we used to think, like, eastern South Dakota was like, whoa, 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 you can't haul <laughs> distillers from eastern South Dakota, that's way too far. Yo. And, uh, not the case, I guess, anymore. Where's the plant at? Your, your plant that you guys... Here. Or do you go uh, all over with it? It's all over the place. Is it? Many different locations. So. This dust is way better than uh, uh, what's the white stuff? What's just the? Uh, gosh, I hauled a load of fertilizer from Portland out to uh, Nebraska, and it was all white. There's potash or there's urea. Well, maybe it was pot. I think it was potash. It come off of must have barged it in or something to Portland on a boat. Probably urea then, I would think. Does it take all your breath away when does the dust so bad like you're like oh. not really, but I wonder. Whatever it was, we unloaded it in Nebraska, it was so dusty, you couldn't hardly breathe. Like the whole place just filled with dust and you're like oh. <laughs> you're like on the ground dying, you know. Our organic potash is actually like that actually. Is it? Yep, you know, it's really dusty and I mean, it was it was bad. Like I shut my truck off because I was worried it was gonna get sucked into my filter, and I was like, "Oh no!" Has this leg ever plugged up? Oh yeah, a few many times. Really? Oh yeah. We had the uh, actually the conveyors plug off first, then uh, then it goes back up the leg and. Oh. You mind if we chat for a sec? Uh, sure. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Don't worry. You guys, this is Eric. Eric is a wizard in all things fertilizer, corn, soybeans, and cattle, believe it or not. That's where we found our little connection is with cattle. But out here, they don't call you ranchers, do they? No, not really. <laughs> what do they call you? Just a regular farmer. They call them beef farmers, like beef, B W -E E F. And I'm like, no, 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 son. You're a rancher. <laughs> You're a small rancher. So in uh, in Montana, if you called yourself a beef farmer, everyone would be like, "You're what now?" <laughs> he is a uh, he's a born and bred Wisconsin through and through. Woo! I already gave him a piece of cheese. He was tickled to death to have it. <laughs> Everybody out here loves cheese. That's what we Absolutely. all think. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. See, it's it's true. <laughs> I told him last night that if, because I was kind of parked on the road, you know, you probably saw when you pulled into work. Yep. I told him that I hung a note 
on my window with a piece of cheese as a peace offering to anybody that I angered <laughs> by parking on their road. Uh, That's so, the way to our hearts through yep, the cheese. Yep, the cheese, the cheese, <laughs> please. Oh, man. <clears throat> yep. Good stuff. How long have you worked with the elevator? Uh, this will be my fifth year. Nowadays, a five-year employee is hard to come by. Right. Usually everybody's like, in like in trucking, oh, it's so bad. You, uh, you get someone to drive for like two months and they're like, all right, I found a better job. You're like, okay. We just trained you. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I've had that happen with cattle. You bring a new guy on and you train him and you teach him and then they fly the coop. So what can you tell the folks about potash? Or I mean, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Scratch that. What can you tell the folks about phosphate? Organic phosphate. Because well, we, we don't know anything about it. You are, you are the authority and we know nothing. Well, it's phosphorus, what it is. Uh -huh. um, it comes from a rock, basically what it is, drilled out of the ground. Basically, it's a slow release fertilizer is what I believe it is, what it is. Oh, okay. So. Which is key, because you guys, a lot of times when you put fertilizer down, if it gets too wet, you know, conventional fertilizer, it'll just, boom, it leaches down and you can lose a lot of it, right? You know. run off or whatever. So by slow release, you mean that it, it just kind of hangs in the soil for a while. It takes, because it's a rock, right. it takes a long time to break down. Does it help your cattle grow if you sprinkle it on their back? <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't. <laughs> no, okay. okay. I thought I'd ask, because you know, I'm always open to learning new tricks and new, new stuff. So if it was something that out here in Wisconsin that works, you know, to sprinkle it on the cows, then I was gonna bring that back to Montana and teach all the beef farmers in Montana <laughs> about, uh, about that. Oh, the cool Wisconsin people raised That's yes, right. <laughs> yeah. I said, I went to Wisconsin and I got a piece of cheese and I learned a trick about raising beef. <laughs> I don't know if they do. They, they must put some kind of phosphate in cattle mineral, probably. I suppose. Eh? I believe so. I've never yeah. looked at the analysis close enough to see, but there's a guy back home that has a he has a natural cattle mineral that he basically brings the rock in, grinds it all up, and it, it has a full feed analysis to it that yep. works as a natural cow mineral. Well, you guys, we're just about wrapped up here. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where I'm going next. I'm hoping to be going to Pennsylvania, but we don't know. This, the way these loads work, it's just like spin the wheel. You never know until they send you the email. So, right. Hopefully so, back to Wisconsin again. Yeah, right. He's like, Wisconsin. Wisconsin forever. Wait, Wisconsin forever. Yeah, yeah, right there. Look at that. Well, there you have it, rock phosphate. Kind of a cool thing. Did a little research on it for you. Was created from, it's created and mined from matter that is pulled off ancient seabeds that were in Idaho way back in the way back days. But it's a, a very good natural fertilizer. So when I, uh, when I cleaned out my trailer and swept out my tarps, I kept a, kept a little plastic bag full of it. I'm gonna sprinkle in the greenhouse, try it out. So plans have been kind of up in the air. Thought, thought they had me some loads going out to Pennsylvania. And then I was gonna do Maryland, back to Kansas City, but that fell through. So then I had no load and I was just gonna be sitting and waiting, which sometimes that's just the way. But remember, the weekend's coming up and you always wanna get loaded Friday to do a long haul so that you can keep utilizing your time and keep the flow going, you know what I'm saying? So uh, dispatch calls me up and says, uh, we found a load. Pig's blood, blood meal, evaporated pig's blood to go down to uh, Indiana. Evaporated pig's blood. So here we are in uh, deep south Wisconsin. The Illinois border is right, right there. And uh, we're gonna load some dehydrated pig's blood, which is used as a protein supplement in feed products. You guys, there's so much stuff out here on the hopper world that you're just like, we're doing what? <laughs> but uh, this stuff is really, 
odious. It has a very bloody smell like nothing you've ever seen. So I'll uh, let you enjoy the treasures and the red crimson dust that is pig's blood. Here's the thing though with this load. This is a short haul that we're doing. It's just going down to Indiana, 230 miles. Um, this area was just dead for loads. So get me down to Indiana, that'll get us a better shot of something. But he said, oh, yeah, you can load heavy, it's up to you. But it's such a short run that if I load heavy, it only, it only makes me an extra couple hundred dollars. And I don't think it's worth the risk of the hassle of if you did get dinged somewhere or whatever. You know, the, the ticket would not even come close to the money that you're gonna make for loading a little extra weight. So, these kind of loads, it's a no-brainer. You load it, just load it. Load it to local standards, that's what we'll call it. Load it to local standards, and we'll get her down there and offload and, uh, and see what shakes. Nice guy, huh? <laughs> nice guy, hard-working dude, you can tell. You can just tell someone that's on top of their stuff and someone that ain't but uh, it's this giant warehouse out there it's got all kinds of commodities in this thing did you hear him I think he said three and a half million bushels of wheat they had in there just to uh, put, give you some perspective a semi load of wheat is about a thousand bushels one thousand so if they have three and a half million if that's what he said I think that's what he told me that gives you an idea smell it already. So we got, we got real close. I need about 4,000 more pounds to be uh, legal as a bald eagle. So I'll show you where we're at before he dumps it and gets it all dusty. Okay, so we're shooting for 80,000. 80,000, that's what we're shooting for. We're gonna find out how close we came. <laughs> how close are we? You're still legal, 75, 540. Oh, looky there. <laughs> Fight a few uh, donuts. <laughs> Fight a few donuts and we're gonna be just right on the money. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. 
the whole worst part of this blood, you guys. Squeeze by here. The whole worst, worst part of this blood is the smell is such a weird. It's not like gross. You're not like, oh, that's gross. It's like, what the, Papa? And this wasn't as bad. Uh, they loaded it really fast. Usually, when you go to a, a kill plant and load it, it takes almost two hours because they just have this real slow process. These guys have it stockpiled, so it's really fast. Let's see what my trailer weighs. Forty-five thousand. Um, it's really fast. So it was actually less dust because it was fast. But here's my problem: when I do this with my stash, oh, I can smell it. I'm gonna have to mask it with something. I'm gonna have to spray something on me or some deodorant or <laughs> do something. Put some old spice in my mustache. <laughs> Starting to feel real piggish all of a sudden. You know, I'm not a spray deodorant guy, but I did get some Axe just to spray as an air freshener into my, like into my seat. You know, like spray it like just to let it emanate. Pretty strong, but it doesn't. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Smell like a teenage boy at a junior high dance. Oh, it smokes, that's a lot of fragrance. But it's better than pig's blood. <laughs> okay, I came back in here. He said I'd come look around. I want to see how this is all set up. It's so big. <laughs> it's, it's huge in here. Look at this pile of corn. Oh. <laughs> it's funny to think how we scrimped and scrimped and all the stuff we did to get feed for our cattle back home. <laughs> and then you come into a place like this and you see all this corn, you're just like, holy moly. I have no idea the dimensions of this building, so I'm not even gonna guess, but it's monstrous. And they have these old uh, international tractors. Basically think of this like a snowblower. Got an auger on it, sucks the corn in, shoots it on up there, they load the trucks. And it went fast, it went really fast. Honestly, I feel just a little bit like pulling a Scrooge McDuck. A Scrooge? I feel like pulling a Scrooge McDuck and diving headfirst into that pile of corn. <laughs> you remember that on DuckTales when he'd been swimming his gold coins? That's kind of what I feel like doing. Okay, I've been walking. You've been walking with me all this time, right? I'm still... There, that's the end of the corn pile. <laughs> then they got wheat here too, which is interesting. We got a lot of wheat. Montana's a wheat state. In fact, that's our main... It's our main jive out in Montana. Wheat. Unfortunately, wheat is a very poor feed for cattle compared to the others. It's not poor, it's just dangerous. It's hard to feed them because it's volatile in their bellies. Anyway. Oh, look at this big fella. Hey, buddy. It's a big timer. A lot of bread. That is a lot of bread. Have you guys been watching the market on these old tractors? They have, it's just exploded. These tractors from like the Magnum series and whatnot. <laughs> you wouldn't believe what a tractor with eight or 10,000 hours that looks like that would go for on an auction. These days, I think it's a beast. That baby load a truck in a bet. I bet you've been in this fountain for about a minute. Oh. Whew. You know, the other nice thing about uh, shooting these YouTube videos on the road is that every place I load or unload, 
I get one more subscriber because they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> well, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. Oh, look at this one. This one's a, like a belt-driven beast. So you use a loader and just dump grain on top of that. Up the belt. This is their unloader. That's how they make those giant piles. <laughs> the old Lamar transport conveyor boys and girls. Yeah, that's how they make them giant, giant piles. Back into the light. Okay, well, that's the pig blood. I can't believe how fast that loaded. Now my next obstacle is that where I'm going in Indiana, I gotta run through the Chicago, the old windy city. And I do not care for those roads very much. Being a little Montuckin, <laughs> a little Montana boy. I gotta do some planning. I may just hang tight and uh, wait till the cover of darkness. Not because of enforcement, Hold on, look at these babies. You guys have so much stuff. Sorry I keep getting sidetracked. Got like a... Here's some reference. <laughs> like a raccoon trap. <laughs> 